Hi guys and welcome to um, book haul number 22 and man oh man I say this every time but I buy books so quickly. You know I was doing pretty good until um, <laughs> just a whole bunch of books came out that were on my to be read list and I have no impulse control. You know, so instead of waiting until I've read a few of the few hundred that I have to read, I buy all the pretty shiny things and we're here. Um, the main purpose of this video though is that it is September 3rd today and it was Dark Dawn's book birthday. And uh, I actually have another copy of this coming too. I'll probably end up with three copies total because I'll also, once the paperback from Waterstones, comes out I'll get that but that's a ways away so here's the beautiful um, Barnes and Noble first um, signed first edition working on my um, signed copies by Jay Kristoff I've had um, I really regret because I got to meet him once this year that was in a vlog when I went to visit my friend in Utah he was at a Salt Lake City this tiny little bookstore just like two miles from their house and it was amazing, but I didn't know I was going to see him, so I didn't get any of my book signed that I wanted to, and I couldn't, I mean, I had to fly, so I couldn't go crazy with it, but I, someday when I get to see him again, I'll get everything signed, but um, here's this beautiful copy. Um, I really just want to throw my hands up and do nothing but read this, but also I know once it's finished, it's over for me, the series is, so I might wait a little later but it's getting read this month for sure it's happening um, but I am gonna work on a few of the other ones that are a little quicker to get through so that I can really savor this oh the Nevernight Chronicle is so good but anyway um, going down that route this series this uh, book haul will mostly be historical romance as you can see by the title but I'll start with everything else that isn't because most of my historical romance is one author and so I won't go into too much detail but let's start with um just everything else that I picked up because holy crap so first off one you've probably already seen in a few of my vlogs is after I read um or I was only like a little ways into the fifth season I picked up the Obelisk Gate which I'm about 100 pages into and the Stone Sky because I know I wanted to read both of those I'm um, going really great with the Obelisk Gate so far this series guys I can't even do a snippet for it you'll have to check out my review for the fifth season if you want to know more about this it's a fantastic like um science fiction fantasy there's geology fantasy in there which I didn't know was a thing but it is and it's really interesting so that's been really good um this book um remember me by Chelsea Babolsky which I actually read one of her other works and this came in my the my final um unplugged book box so I won't be getting that one anymore just because I'm taking a break from book boxes because I had about three going at one time and I just really need to save some money so unless there's like a special edition box I want for something I will probably take a break from those um but this one is some kind of like ghost story set in 1878 in the Winslow Grand Hotel. So, don't know about this one because it wasn't one that I would have normally picked, but that's the fun about book boxes sometimes. Um, next, I picked up these two beautiful books. Um, they're called The Scribbly Man and Hateful Things by Terry Goodkind. So these are this little like, they're supposed to be kind of like children's stories um, and it's a novella in the Richard and Kaylin series, all of that, um, which I still haven't finished, but I really wanted these cute little um, copies of it because they're just, it's so beautiful. And I have all of Terry Goodkind's books, and so I had to get these ones too since they're just so beautiful. Some new releases recently. So I have The Demon World, which is already on my TBR. You probably already saw this. Um, this is by Sally Green. This is book two in the Smoke Thieves series. I really love the first one, um, even though it was like a three and a half star because the potential is what really had me into it. So um, definitely wanted to get this one. Next, I have The um, Queen of Ruin by Tracy Banghart. This is the second book to Grace and Fury, which I just read last month. Um, and... 
This is about two sisters that are dealing with some crazy stuff right now. No spoilers for that. But if you want to know more about my feelings on that, you can check out um, my August wrap up because that's when I read this one. Um, Grace and Fury was my viewer's pick for last month. One of them anyway. Then I picked up Vow of Thieves by Mary E. Pearson. I haven't even read Dance of Thieves, but I do know that this is this one's only a duology, so now I have both of them, and also it's beautiful. I love the, um, the uh, wow, I just forgot the name of the series, The Remnant Chronicles, and this is a duology set like seven, ten years afterwards, and I really want to read it. I just haven't yet <laughs> because I know it's not about my favorite characters and I really want that but I heard this one kind of focuses pretty heavily on the romance and I love that uh some people don't but I do so I'll definitely um get to this one when I can and then um this is a book that I already have but I bought a big floppy copy because I'm going to annotate this one and with the mass market paperbacks it's really hard to take notes on it um i've been well my relationship with outlander is fantastic i love outlander you know i have a whole shelf dedicated to it one of my friends joe at average uh not so average joe um she i sent her my annotated copy of outlander and she's reading that now and I don't really need to reread Outlander because I just reread that at the beginning of the year. But the rest of them I will reread with her, especially leading up to The Fiery Cross, which is what the fifth season of the show will be based on. So I want to read through this and remind myself of some of the main events um, and things like that. And then I've been annotating as I reread these. And I love the big floppy copies like this because you can do that with it. So very excited for that one. And then um, the other sequel I got, which this was a super cool surprise. One of my friends found this at a thrift store, which I know you're not supposed to like get these here, but she knew that I really love the first one and she found it at a thrift store. And that person's crazy who gave it to that, but I won't say no. And so I have an art copy of A Heart So Fierce and Broken. Um, so my friend bought it for me and yeah, I'm super excited. I love the first one. And the second one, this one is um, from Gray's point of view, plus a new character. Um, I already started this, by the way. And then I like stop myself, <laughs> which I don't know why, because I can finish it. But there's a new character. Um, and I'm really excited. And it's so beautiful. And I can't believe that I ended up with an arc of this. And whoever that person is who read it and gave it to a thrift store, you're lost, man. Like, I'm taking it. These are all books that just came out today. And then I'll go through some other things I got. So I picked up Crown of Coral and Pearl, Serpent and Dove, which I've been seeing a lot about. I think this one is supposed to be kind of like a uh, Romeo and Juliet something. Maybe I'm lying. But I've been seeing this one around. And look at that beautiful cover. That is ruined by a Barnes & Noble sticker. Like, when will Barnes & Noble learn? Oop, oop, oop. <gasps> this one came off. Usually the book club ones don't come off very well. Look at that. This is by Shelby Mahruin. But I know I really want to read it because I've heard good things about that arc as well. And I also picked up There Will Come a Darkness by Katie Rose Poole. I've been waiting for this one too. Look at that. Red and black. Ooh so pretty and it looks like there's a group of five people working together and it's very like Grecian looking and it's been man it's been like blurbed by so many people Kirsten White Laura Sebastian Sarah Holland that's awesome so very excited about that one and then this one was a total cover buy and I'm hoping that it's as amazing as the cover is Sometimes, sometimes no. And that is Kingdom of Souls by Renna Barron. And this one I like because it's about um, witch doctors. And Ara, who is not very good at any of those skills. And so she tries to like trade for the power and it doesn't go the way she wants it to go. But I mean, look at that. I'm assuming this is fantastic. Yep, and this is um, Own Voices. Rena Barron, look at that foxy lady. Hello, Rena. So I'm into it. I'm excited. So those were the new 
releases I picked up. Um, let's go over. There's a few I got at a thrift store with my sister. Or, or wait, let's start. I picked up two classics this month. Um, I picked up this gorgeous um, copy of the Count of Monte Cristo. The full, like, unabridged version of it. Um, just because I've been wanting to read this book and I've tried it a few times. It's my favorite movie, by the way. The one with Jim Caviezel and Richard Harris and um, Guy Pierce is is my favorite film of all time. If you've ever watched, back when my channel is new, I did a my favorite um, movie video and it's still true. I have a playlist. Um, I'll link it down below. It's all, it's like TV and movie stuff because I really am interested in that. And once in a while I do a movie review if something really like hits me or whatever. But I just, I really want to try to do it. And I like how this one is done because at Barnes and Noble Classics, I don't like all the footnotes and all the things in it. Um, especially since like I know this story I just don't know the full details so I bought this beautiful copy of this I don't know when I would get to it but it might be something that I just like read a chapter of at a time like that and then this demon I have Wuthering Heights I had to buy a new copy of this to do the buddy read with my friend because I couldn't give two craps about these characters but I'm looking really forward to doing a hate review about it when I'm done but I say that I am giving it a chance, guys, but there's violence towards children, there's violence towards each other, there's violence towards women, there's just like horrible things in this book, and I'm not getting any enjoyment out of it, and I don't think all classics necessarily have to have a message, because at the time they were written, they weren't written to be a classic, so there doesn't always have to be a bigger meaning, but the fact that this book has stuck around so long and everyone makes a big deal of it, I don't get it. I don't want to read about these people. There we go. Rant over about that. Okay. The books I picked up at the thrift store. I found A Man Called Ove or Ove by Frederick Bachman. I found this for only $3 and I've only read one Frederick, two Frederick Bachman and they both just killed me. Um, Bear Town and then I read Every Morning the Way Home Gets Longer and Longer, which is the most painful 98 pages I have ever read. Just mm, so much. So he is a Swedish writer and all his works are translated and his translator is amazing too. So um, I might read that with Murphy at some point. I picked up, I found The Assassin's Apprentice who I've been wanting to buy and I found this really cool like old copy of it by Robin Hobb. So that's really fun. Um, I've heard good things about this. Um, someone, he's getting trained to be an assassin I guess. I don't know. I've heard good things. I just don't know a lot. All right. And then I found these. Ooh, I'm so excited about this. So I found, um, I'd heard about this. So this is the first half of the eye of the world. Um, and it, when it was marketed to young adults, so it is illustrated, like here's a picture of Rand. Um, there's one of like Perrin in here too. I saw so it's in two parts. I ordered the second part. I found it on eBay because the bookstore I went to only had this first part. But it was marketed towards YA and here's the first half of it. And so it like ends. Um, after. Chapter 23. So I just thought that was so cool. So I had to get it. I mean, I'm only a little ways into the series, but I was like, how cool. And when I want to reread it, maybe I can read a shorter, like I can split it up into two and be great. And then I also found a first edition of New Spring, which is the um, prequel novel, which I haven't read yet because Daniel says you're supposed to read it after five and I'm just about to read book five, but I found a hardcover. Um, I love this bookstore, by the way. It's my favorite bookstore. I There's a clip of it in my vlog from um, Labor Day weekend vlog. Um, because I've gotten a lot of first editions there and they're reasonably priced. Because it's not like they're rare. Like this only came out in 2004. It's not a rare book. But I like finding first editions because they might be rare later on. And he always wraps them in this really pretty... Um, in like the plastic so they stay nice so a lot of my Terry Goodkind novels I found first editions there um which even if I never read those books again I will keep them because there's just there's just a place in my heart that won't be removed even whatever 
And then I found this, it's called The Fallon Blood, which is by Robert Jordan when he was writing as Reagan O'Neill, and it's about the American Revolution. And I knew he wrote other books, you just never hear about them. So this is set in 1765, and it just seems so cool. And this is a series. Um, so this one's not a first edition, but it's still wrapped. And I just, I had to get it. So I don't know, that'll be a fun, maybe I'll like read that um, at some other point, but that was super cool. So um, the rest of this now is going to be historical romance. So if you're not interested in that, um, you can move along. Thanks for joining. Um, but I'm going to talk a little bit about the mass of them that I picked up and what's going on with that. Okay. So um, I'm working on a video having to do with historical romance. Um, because as I've said in a few things, when I look up historical romance on booktube, there's about five videos that come up and two of them are mine. And I mean, sure, that's like flattering to me that I have things on there. But also, it makes me sad because I know a lot of people read historical romance and a lot of people have fond feelings for it. And I wanted to do something fun. I read about five historical romance authors um, who are my favorite. I made videos about them before, but I really wanted to kind of like open my mind and um, try some new ladies or men. I mean, I definitely didn't find any men writing historical romance, but I'm sure there are some somewhere. And so some of them are ladies I've heard about before and others were ones that I just walked by and I was looking for like Regency um, historical romance and um, one of them's a cowboy romance and I picked them up. So what I did is I bought the first novel in a series of like seven different series. Um, and so I'll tell you what those are now. So I bought Cold Hearted Rake by Lisa Claypez. I bought Marry Me by Sundown by Johanna Lindsay. I bought Lady Be Bad by Megan Frampton. I bought How to Forget a Duke by Vivienne Lorette. I bought... Well, these two I had bought at a different time, but I bought The Heir and the Soldier by Grace Burroughs. I and I picked up The Art of Sinning by Sabrina Jeffries. So I had picked up these um, seven new authors to try them. So I picked up those books. Well, then I started my series. <laughs> and the first one I read is Cold Hearted Rake by Lisa Claypez. And I loved it. As you can see, if you watched my vlog, um, I loved it. And so I went and bought that entire series of the ones that were out. And I've already read the first three. Um, I'm trying to take a break before I finish it, but I absolutely loved it. This is her series the Ravenels. Do I mix those two up? This is the Ravenels and I loved it and I loved it so much. And so when my sister and I went shopping this weekend, I went ahead and bought 10 more books by her. Um, they're in a couple different series here. Let me find the And I bought, um, these three are from the Wallflower series. These two are from the Bow Street Runner series. This is an older one of hers. This is Stranger in My Arms. This is a standalone. Suddenly You, this is a standalone. And then I have the um, four of the books from, let me see, the Hathaway series. So. I just went ham on her because I found them at a thrift store and they were $2 each. And usually when I like a historical romance author, I like a lot of them. And here's the thing too. That is for me the best part about historical authors is their books are simple. It's a love story. There's not a ton of like research or world building that needs to go into it because they're just set in usually England or the Americas in that time of period. And there's nothing more you need to do. You just tell a fun story. And so you can, a lot of authors have a big backlist of books you can read. And 
that can be really fun. You know, we have a lot of these fantasy books I just showed you. I've waited years for the sequels to come out. And so that's why I always have a soft spot for historical romance because they really let you get through the books. And then I forgot one more. Um, this was a new release last week and I've already read it. And that was The Wallflower Wager by Tessa Dare. Already read it. Already loved it. Five star. Fantastic. And yeah, I had a great time. So thank you so much for watching this book haul. It was a really, I mean, they're always really fun uh, piling books on that I'll never get to. I will die with the TBR list 400 books long, but I love it. I love it. I love books. So thank you so much for joining me. I put up new videos every Monday and Thursday and some bonus videos in there. Um, let me know which of these you're excited about, if there's any you want to read with me, and um, make sure you subscribe and like this video. It really helps me out. Um, have a wonderful day, everyone. Bye.